Hey guys, it's Jenny with Art for Good. Today we are going to work on combining a texture background with an acrylic paint pour of ocean for this amazing effect. So let's get started. First, we're gonna do our texture background and let that dry for about two days. I'm just using Spackle from the hardware store. Uh, you'll see me mixing here and I'll put a link to my, some similar products you can get off of Amazon in the description below. I'm also gonna mix this spackle with a little bit of just white Liquitex titanium white paint, uh, just to help make it a little more fluid for me to stir and a little less crumbly when I get it onto the canvas. I have really enjoyed uh, doing some experimenting with these textured backgrounds lately. I've done a few and I'll do a few more. So if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in learning more about this, make sure that you're subscribed by hitting that button below. So I'm gonna stir it up really well and then I'm gonna spread it out in a thin layer over the top left portion of the canvas. I just want a very thin layer. You really don't need a lot to get the effect that you're looking for with this starburst pattern in the background. I love this cake spreader. It's actually supposed to be made for icing, but it's kind of like what I'm doing now, really. I'm just like icing a cake, except it's a canvas. So don't be afraid to use unconventional tools. And again, I'll put some links to some of my favorite tools down below. So you want to do a thin layer, make sure it's as smooth as you can get it. And then I have this giant uh, spackle tool I found at the hardware store. And you can also use a ruler, you could use a large craft stick, something that's just straight. I'm just going to make an X pattern, making the cross section of the X in the upper quadrant or the corner, I should say, of the uh, composition. And then I'm just gonna keep doing this crisscross and using that center intersection piece as the reference point. So all of my markings are gonna pass through the center of that starburst and that's gonna give you the effect that we're looking for. All right, so you're just gonna keep going with that until you have very close together lines. And it's gonna look something like this. Don't be afraid of the little crumblies. Once it dries, we're gonna uh, leave it to dry for about a, a day or two. And then we're gonna just do a light sand with a sand sponge just to get off the crumbles. And then we're gonna spray paint it with a chrome spray paint. Again, make sure to check down in the description below for further instructions and products. Now that that has dried for oh, a few hours, I'm using my, I'm doing my acrylic paint pour. So I'm using some silver. I'm also using some aqua here. I have custom mixed these colors. So this is an aqua green that um, is mixed with a little bit of cerulean blue and a tiny bit of black to give it a gray effect. I also have a darker turquoise color. Again, has been mixed with a little bit of black to give it a gray effect. I have titanium white. I'm making sure to put the white at the top of the wave because that's really where the sunlight would be shining on top of the wave. And 
And of course I'm going in with some silver again because I wanna tie the background to this um, wave as well because it's such a strong effect with the metallic background. I wanna make sure to continue that a little bit for this uh, middle section of this piece. My paint pouring recipe can be found uh, down below, but I'll also put a link to my tutorial for my recipe right here for you. All right, so I'm using my hair dryer. I'm just gonna kind of use the center as a cross point. So I'm gonna go in one direction and then I'm gonna flip and go the other direction. I'm really loving this color palette so far. It's very pastel, it's very cool, toned, and I just think the colors go so well together. All right, now I'm just gonna torch it with my kitchen torch to get out any bubbles and to help those little cells form. Now, for the piece in the middle, I'm not exactly 100% happy with that. So I'm gonna go in with my straw. Um, I use a reusable straw and then I'm just gonna blow sort of some of that out so it doesn't look so formed, I guess I should say. It looks a little bit more like splashing in the center. So this is a good trick you can use. Just bust out your straw. All right, so we're gonna finish the bottom part. This is actually a Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to fill in the rest of the bottom and the sides. And then I'm gonna go in with my hair dryer and just blow the rest of this out so that it looks a little bit more integrated, like the wave is kind of splashing over the dark background, or foreground, I should say.
Now last, I'm gonna go in and add some elements here that help make it look a little more realistic. I'm going in with white, just drawing it in almost like I would with a pen or a paint marker um, with a craft stick. And I'm just doing the lines to add a little bit of shape and movement to this wave in the center. And make it look like that sun in the background is kind of shining towards the center of this wave creation. All right, so this is the final piece. I really love how unique this is. This is a really cool effect. You can really do this in any different color palette you want. You could do gold background with different colored wave. So feel free to experiment with this. And most importantly, let me know how it goes. Put something in the comments to let me know um, or share your pictures of your creations. I'd love to see them. If you're interested in more of this textured art, I have a playlist here that I'll leave you with so you can watch some other compositions that I've been experimenting with. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'll see you next time.